uh, so nice to see actually so many people. And for once, I'm not actually presenting my PhD uh, research, which is good. It's a side, um, just something I'm doing on the side. So trying to change archaeology and create even more disruption into archaeology. And um, yes, many logos. I want to fit as many logos as you can, as I could, into my presentation. So this is share presentation with Grant Cox. Unfortunately, it couldn't make it, but I'm sure I will give justice to everything we've been working so far. Um, so before starting, I actually wanted to ask how many of you know about blockchain? How many of you are investors into cryptocurrency? <laughs> you don't need to tell me how much you have. I just want to know if you might have invested. That's <coughs> okay. So three, four, maybe. Something like that. Okay, so in case you decided to invest after this presentation, please do not invest more than you are happy to lose. And apart from that, let's see what the blockchain can actually do for archaeology. And um, while I was presenting, while preparing this presentation, I thought um, that actually that is really archaeology. Um, we normally say, yes, we have so many problems. We had this many problems for years, and there is I have a technology solution and an algorithm, and then we're still working on it, which is pretty much what happens every time that we meet the CA on in other conferences. And uh, the other things I seem always use for this citations in my presentation, I don't know why, but clearly it says really interesting things. So the speed at which technology evolves is often greater than the methodological progress. And as you know, archaeology is really, really slow, making changes and embracing them, and making sure we do amazing things, but it takes forever to actually get all the archaeologists together and making um, changes. And um, as well, we talked before about educating um, to use um, open context and to use actually all the standards that we're using. Um, so again, that fits pretty much what we've been talking in the first half of this <coughs> presentation. So I have two disclaimers to make. The first one, we clearly are really, really, really at the beginning for earliest adopters. Um, so just imagine that the, the blockchain technology has been identified as the new, the internet revolution. So this is coming, the blockchain is coming for us. Um, we are so early stage though. So when you're thinking about actually what it is, think about the first, literally the first web page, <coughs> the first website. So when you think about all amazing things that you can do, the blockchain with your data, think about this, and we can work together to arrive actually to how Google looks like right now. But please don't make assumption. Just think about we are probably 1993 um, at the moment. So saying that, how many of you know about Bitcoin? Heard about Bitcoin? Okay. So the Bitcoin and the blockchain are two separate things. And Bitcoin is actually a cryptocurrency, as you might know, uh, and it's an application that uses blockchain technology. So every time I talk about blockchain, I see, see really, really sad faces that have no idea what I'm talking about. And then I say Bitcoin, so I said, I know exactly what you're talking about. Actually, no. So Bitcoin is just a app that builds on top of it. So what we are talking about today is the blockchain that is a distributed ledger of transactions, right? And as you all know, started not yesterday, not in 2008. It started in 1993, so it's almost as old as the web. And it started as an idea how we can actually make transactions together. And in 2008, after the credit crunch, as you all know, um, the idea was to actually start to use a decentralized way to record information to cut the middlemen, so where the banks that were kind of making everyone kind of bankrupt. So what it does is source immutable blocks that are connected to another one, forming a chain of information. And in that case, the validity is uh, agreed upon by peers on a decentralized network. So just take all these kind of words and think about what amazing things could do for archaeology. Secure by cryptography, right? So it's everything there. So what the technology is promising us is distributing. Um, so if this is immutable, decentralized, um, you can program as many things as you want, so you can build as many standards as you, as you want, as we're probably doing in any case in archaeology. And accessibility, you can have permission, or it could be without permission, so it, it could be truly open, but also having keys to access more information. And the store data, as you can see, it's many, many things that we already do in archaeology, right? 
So how does it work? It's literally different transaction that goes from one to another one. Like imagine I actually have to send some money to you, right? It's nice, right? So I send you money. What we normally do is at the moment I go to my bank, I send a transaction to the bank, and the bank sends the information to your bank, right? And then this works. And then at the end you have a transaction. And what we do is we actually go through a middleman. Right? So what the blockchain does is I'm actually sending information and I'm sending the money directly. But in order to validate and not go to the third one, either 25 or whatever many people here will see that sending the money. So you can't actually say that you never receive it. And this is pretty much what happens. So there is a, a link of information that goes through. So you send, I send a transaction and everyone else, <coughs> they confirm what they, is happening. And this is actually validated by a network. So decentralized again, and there is a protocol that decided that this is happening. And in order to encrypt it, information actually going from one block to another one. So all the blocks are actually make it and connected through a chain. So if Benjamin decided to break the chain, we'll actually have to corrupt the entire network here to make sure that this and validate that this transaction ever happened. Because otherwise there is something break and we can identify where it happened. So if we're thinking about it, the implication <coughs> are mainly those four. Um, so there is no third party, we don't go for the third party. Everyone kind of knows what's going on. Everyone understands what is going on, which means that actually the third party we need to find how to add value in this peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Uh, it's transparent because everyone can see that there is any information transaction that happen. Um, accountability and efficiency, and then think about smart con contract. So there is something called smart contract, which may, means they set conditions, which could be, okay, I send you to a work for me, actually, I'm gonna be your marketing person, right? So you tell me, okay, I have this research and this site, um, you work for me, and in three months, if my Twitter account go from zero to a million viewer or followers, I will receive extra money. Otherwise, I will probably pay the basics. So in three months, what you need to do is to run away, go to Twitter, try to check, and then see if I actually hit the million viewers. What the smart contract does, it does automatically. So it just says, it runs an algorithm that says, if this, after three months, you read Twitter, and if this happens, move the transaction directly. So if you're taking it outside of the money, making uh, things, and you imagine your data, and you think, okay, so I have a, a web I have a site, and I'm digging, and you have five years, and I'm finding agents that you have five years to publish, otherwise the data will go live, and someone else cannot be published. It means that we can actually, we have to publish, right? <laughs> Quickly. And if you're on the other side, you're thinking, okay, that research is really, really slow publishing. Yes, five years after that, I can go in and work with this, um, the data and kind of um, have access to it. So about the opportunities for new value creation, I decided actually to link to someone that knows better. Now, if I can find how the volume works in the German keyboard. Anyone knows? <laughs> right. So this guy is a marketing advisor for one of the coin, and talks about. Oh no, it doesn't work. The switch off the voice. No, see, it doesn't work. Oh, hold on. No, technological failure. Right, I can show you an amazing picture that I will talk about. So he developed this structure. Right, so he defines the blockchain as a basic. It doesn't have the open source principle. It doesn't have any money in it. And then what you actually have, you have the storage, oh no. 
the storage of information, those are always happening when we talk about technology, right? Right. <laughs> um, so you actually talk about um, storage and content, uh, which could be a minor connotation because you store information and data. Um, and then the smart contract, because there, is, there could be a transaction as well um, that could have a money implication. And then you have, again, something else that has a money value, which is the social, so the opening up, everything you've been tracking, the reputation of the data set and the research that you're doing, uh, again, identity, everything that we talk in any case about <coughs> archaeology. And then on top, you have all those up. Again, as you can see, the blockchain as a blockchain itself, it doesn't actually have any monetary value, it doesn't have an economic value, but everything else you build on top of it is where we can, as archaeologists, we can actually make it sustainable. Right, so if I go back to the presentation, and this is where this project came around. So, um, what happened was I was in Japan um, to a conference on digital scholarships and we were at the pub as many other conferences in Heritage and we're sitting down and we're talking about investment and blockchain. We thought it wouldn't be amazing if we can actually build a blockchain that was specifically for archaeologists and archaeologists working with developers to design something that can make um, data sets sustainable, that can actually create some um, money to pay archaeologists to do work that they need without actually going to a certain government and pledge for money and trying to get the funding that we needed to do stuff. So and this is how I actually came around. So we went around, we got, went back home and trying to find if something was already available. And we found a group of developers in Italy that they started this coin, Capo, from Capua, the ancient Capua, as you might all know, and this is the archaeology lesson coming around. And um, Capua, um, they decided to actually go against Rome with Hannibal, and because they needed money to go and war against Rome, they decided to create their own coins, which is the Capo coin. Um, and uh, as the proper coin, it has two different faces. One is the economical value of it, and this is the Capo coin. And the other one is the Diana um, face, which is actually where the database of archaeological data sits. So in that case, the Diana money doesn't actually have any money connotation, but it's the Capo side of it that actually creates some economic value. So what the team sees is actually how can the blockchain help archaeology? So, and I have seen four or five different points. The first one is, as you know, data get lost in the process. We lose the data. The hard drive can't work anymore because you're using a Mac and then a, a Windows and then it doesn't work. And I had the same problem two weeks ago and I kind of lost all my data. Uh, luckily enough, I had a backup somewhere else. So pretty much what we do in any case. Lots of archaeology is data in context and collection that sometimes is not accessible. As you know, a lot of museums, they have their own extra spreadsheet. I bet you all have an Excel spreadsheet with your own data of some project. I see someone saying no. So at some point in your life, as I told you had probably an Excel spreadsheet that you were using and you shared it with no one, <laughs> I'm sure. And um, so that data is not accessible. And then communication to the blockchain has the potential to open up heritage and kind of make, we can make our own rule through the smart contract. In that case, it was about sharing the data. How can you make it accessible? It could be, for example, imagine a reselling some of the expertise you do. It's true that the basic data is open to everyone, but why do you need to sell your amazing 3D model that takes you, I don't know, took you like three weeks to render? Why can you not actually make it available for a little tiny token, like everyone else in other creative industry and not are actually doing? Why should you make everything completely free? Why a, I don't know, a small community, um, I work in indigenous community, why they should make all their heritage accessible for free? They can actually create a system by which they have some income to reinvest in the community and make it sustainable in the long run. So this is something that um, the blockchain can help with. And also because it's mute, immutable, every time that you add information, and the information will be traceable. And if you think about 3D images and reconstruction of archaeological sites and landscape, there are a series of decisions that we take as archaeologists. And a lot of the times we show only the final pretty picture, and we don't actually explain why the decision was taken. So in that case, you have everything there and open to everyone. 
And again, the database can potentially be the back end to the front end visualization, as I was saying. Now, the vision is, only to, is not only to protect and record data, but also is to provide different level of access to the data. So everything could be, some could be super um, open, some could be protected by intellectual <coughs> property, could be government rules or whatever it is, um, could be open to different type of communities, and again, it's a new system in terms of funding. So I think there is a lot of things we can do. How we do it, we use actually the ARC platform, and what the project wants to do is, um, as you might know, a lot of blockchains have their own platform. ARC, we actually create what is called smart bridges. <coughs> and this would be amazing for archaeology. So as you know, we have a lot of open context information, we have a lot of standards, so what they're doing is, even if you have your own little blockchain and you have your own system, with the smart bridges you can actually connect all the islands together. It's like a kind of creating a massive Google search for the data, databases. But it also means that if someone in maritime archaeology is trying to build their own island with their own blockchain, um, has created a visualization tool that would be perfect for someone that does Roman pottery, the person in Roman pottery doesn't need to recreate everything from scratch and try to adapt it. You just press the button and that will be moved and shared. So this is why we kind of use ARC. And what we have now, so we do have someone already on board, um, which is Gary Nobles, that is sitting over there, that helped her to create a, a trial, trying to see. We started clearly with, we went back from the beginning. We were talking about, uh, Benjamin before was saying, maybe we should go back to the simple way. So we did it. We started from XYZ coordinates and location points, um, which is where everything starts with three little data. And we did import it in the blockchain, so it is possible to save data that are not only uh, money-making data. Um, and the idea is to, we actually have it here. So this is how it looks like at the moment when you import it and the, trans the viewer. Okay, now. This German. Steuer, <laughs> that's control. See. Right. So when you press viewer, kind of live, localize exactly where it is. So this is again, just remember we are 1993 on a web page. Um, but that's possible, so it gives you an indication of. Where it is, the name, and it's geolocalized. Massive map. And that is what we had at the moment. And going back. Oh no. On oh, the presentation. Yep, so the next step is exporting data and integrating with Q, um, GIS, and then slowly adding up photos. So, we, yes, we took the approach going back to the beginning. Um, and then slowly build it up. So clearly, so the GitHub, and it's a work in progress, so please, if you see something, um, what we need is we actually want you. And we don't want only men, we also want women. Please <laughs> join me um, in this battle um, and in this disruption. So yes, so any question?